gonna try not to get paint on everything. That's my goal. Oh. There we go. Is that good? This was the part I was most worried about was getting this ear thing on. Like this is gonna fall off eventually. Alright, we'll see how this goes. See if it survives. Alright, uh, my name's Tucker Rodkey, uh, if you didn't hear before. Um, I'm from Philadelphia, and uh, I just wanted to share with you guys um, a couple stories, a couple testimonies, um, tell you part of my story, and that uh, illustrate it for you. Uh, whenever I do a painting, especially the one I'm going to do for you today, um, it's really letting people see into the most intimate part of my relationship with God because, you know, we share our intimacy with God through prayer, we share it through worship, um, and then through the talents that he gives each of us. One of the talents that he gave me was um, doing artwork. I, um, I travel all across the country doing this. Uh, right now I'm traveling from Florida up to New Hampshire um, over the next couple months. And um, yeah, and Pastor Charles, I couldn't like, that sermon was so good. It was so perfect. It was so spot on. It was just in line with my heartbeat for the church, for missions and everything. So like as he was talking about, you know, surrendering to the Lord, allowing him to do a work through you, using what you have um, for the kingdom. It just, just reminded me of all things that I've seen God do. I've been on the road for three weeks now. I started in Key West, um, and I've just seen God move in so many different ways, ways that I can't even, like, it's just ridiculous. Like, for instance, I was just came from Jacksonville. We're out in a park, and I'm standing there. I'm doing a drawing of uh, this guy's portrait, um, and we use it just for evangelism. It just sparked conversation. So I'm working on this portrait, and this homeless guy comes up to me. He's got the craziest scars I've ever seen on a guy. Like, he's just mangled, like, beat-up homeless guy. Comes up to me, he's like, man, I was so stressed over there, dude. I was just, like, freaking out about life because, you know, I don't have anywhere to live, and I know I'm getting food. And then I saw that portrait there, man. That guy in that portrait, he just, he just has such hope, and it's like he was lost. And then he found something, like he found God, and then he found Jesus, and there was just faith. And, man, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, I need that. And I'm standing there, and I'm like, uh, all right. Um, wow, you really nailed it on that one. Good job. Wow, okay, good for you. Jeez. Um, so we got to pray with him, and he left with peace. And, you know, it's not like I can stand there saying, yeah, go me. I did a great portrait. It's like, heck no. That was all the Lord. That was the Lord speaking to someone's life through someone surrendering some artistic skill to them. And it's just amazing to see what God will do when you surrender to him. And this tent that we have, you know, I'm 19 years old, um, so I haven't experienced all the difficulties that other people have, apparently. But um, there was one night, uh, I, I told Pastor Charles' story, I think. I was, um, I was out in, where was I at this time? I was in St. Petersburg, and I was driving around. It was like, I had just done a long day of ministry, drove for like nine hours. Um, it, was pro it had to be at least like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And if I don't have a place to stay, like thankfully I have a place to stay here, um, but if I don't place to stay, I just sleep in the back of my truck. And I'll tell you what, in the Florida heat, that's just a living nightmare. It's ridiculous. So I pull into a Walmart parking lot, and I'm lying there. It's 99 degrees outside. There's people at Walmart at midnight for some reason. Who knows why? So I'm lying there. They have, like, their radios blaring, cars passing by. And as I lie there with sweat pouring down my face, drenching everything below me, I'm like, Lord, take me home now. This is so wrong. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? And I realized, this thing is not what I'm too concerned about. This thing is passing away. I'm getting old. It's, you know, as soon as I hit 16, everything just went downhill. I'll tell you what. Um, but yeah, I've, it's, it's, been a, it's been a wild time on the road. And I've just seen God move in so many crazy ways. And um, it's just hard to describe. And the thing is that people hear, like, hear what I do. They're like, wow, you live on the road telling people about Jesus, using artwork, stuff like that. A, t a month ago, I was working at Target, like putting up shelves and mopping a floor, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, it, it's not like there's something amazing that um, I've ever done or that, you know, makes me a great person. It's, it's just God did something in my life one day. You see, I grew up in a very, um, we were a very Christian home. I grew up in a Christian house, you know, and, uh, I always like to look good in front of people, you know, that was the thing. You get to church, everyone's like, oh, there's Tucker, look at him. He knows like 12 verses, he's five, what to do? Um, and I always like to look good, you know, I went to a Christian school, 
And to top the, all, on top of all that, you know, parents were missionaries. We lived in Africa in like the bush for a couple years. So we were really good as far as Christians go. And so I always like people say, oh, that guy over there, he's a really good Christian. And then I, um, I always thought that, you know, Christianity, that was my thing, you know. But I never owned it. I never owned my faith. Um, I never really accepted it, you know. I just thought it was that thing that was out there. You know, I believed it but I never owned it. Um, so I'm going to be really vulnerable with you guys right now. I just want you guys to see me for, you know, what I really am. So when I was 11 years old, a little sixth grader, and this will give you an idea of the people that you're investing in when you see those little kids running around. Um, I got, I was in a, it was my first year, you know, in a public school setting, and, you know, I go to the library every day, and I learned very quickly, I was a very smart kid, that those internet block things they had in there did not work, and I could bypass those whenever I wanted. Smart kid. So I started to, if you can imagine, look at things that I wasn't supposed to look at in sixth grade. Got heavily involved in that. Um, You know, that was, I look at that now, and I was at like a major crossroads. Like I was at a point in my life where I was either going with God or I was going with the flesh. Those were my two choices. And I come to a crossroads. And uh, I went on a youth retreat at the church because, you know, I had to still look good in front of people. That was the thing. And uh, my youth pastor just like, off to the side, I was like, hey, man, I, I have a couple books over here. If you want them, I'm a major bookworm, love reading, just, it's, I love it. So he gave me this book, More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell. It's this little tiny book. It's got a bunch of, like, proofs for the Christian faith, proofs for the Bible, stuff like that. And as I read it, I came to the conclusion, sixth grader riding home on a bus, I read it in, like, half an hour. I was so excited. I finished it, and I was like, this is real. Jesus is real. The Bible's real. All of this is real. And then beyond that realization, there came the turning point of, if this is real, then my life needs to reflect it. At 11 years old, I decided my life needs to reflect this truth. If Jesus really lived, if he really died, if he really rose again, and tells me to live my life differently, and says he's going to give me the power to do it, then my life should reflect that. And so that's when I owned my faith. And I began reading everything I began studying. Like this Bible that I had, I stole it from my dad. And he didn't appreciate that because I took it. I was like writing notes in it. And he opens it. I was like, oh, you ruined it. I'm like, it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So I've got like notes from way back when in here. But it's going through, learning the scriptures. What are the scriptures? And so, you know, I was starting to owe my faith, really owe my faith, through the mentorship of a bunch of people. Started owning even more and more and more. And then God finally called me. That was a fun day. Um, I, was, I was in college. Um, this is about a year ago right now. I was in college. I was on a mountain in Colorado. And when I say college, I use that term lightly. It was me and one other guy doing, like, online stuff in a mountain in Colorado. <laughs> like, we would wake up. It would be 30 degrees in the room, three feet of snow outside, that kind of thing. So we wake up, and, you know, when you're in the mountain, you don't have cell phone reception. You don't have Internet. You're just, you know, you have nothing else to listen to, so you just listen to God, which is great. Um, so I'm sitting there, and I'm reading my Bible. And God just speaks straight into, like, my heart. Like, as clear as day, just like, I hear the word, you know, Jeremiah 8.20. And, you know, that happens to people, and they're like, man, I'm really, I got to stop talking to myself. This is getting out of hand. Um, But I was like, you know what, let's see just if the Lord is in this. I open up Jeremiah 8.20, and it says, the summer is over, the harvest is ended, and we are not saved. It was the people of Israel after, you know, Jeremiah was giving his whole thing. And he says, they were crying out, and they realized the time has passed. We missed our chance. And he said, Tucker, I've got a mission for you. I've got a plan for you. I've got the summer of 2014 for you. I want you to travel the East Coast using the artistic talents that I've given you to tell people about my son, to tell people about Jesus. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all right, Lord, that's one verse. You're going to have to give me more confirmation. So we go through like 15 more passages. There's like just one right after the other. It was crazy. Completely insane. And then I realized this is what God has for me. Now you have to realize at this point, I'm sitting there at my, um, I made a list actually. I was like, all right, what am I going to need for this trip? All right, I'm going to need to drive a car from, you know, Florida up the East Coast, you know, connecting with churches, stuff like that. So I made a list of all the things that I, you know, didn't have just so I had an idea. I was like, all right, I don't have my license. I don't have a car. I don't have money. I don't have a job. I don't have contacts. Are you sure this is what you want me to do? Are you, okay, this is, you pick me, all right, thanks, Lord, thanks for that. And then 
just over the past year, God has provided every single thing. The week before I left, get this, the week before I left, my car that I had died. Like, cracked head gasket. The thing's gone. It's like $2,000 to fix something like that. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm leaving in two weeks on a bike. Um, if, <laughs> if you could provide something else, that would be great. And he's like, all right. So I get a call from someone. They're like, hey, so someone told someone told someone that you need a car. Do you want a truck? Yeah, why not? You know? So someone gave, gave me like the big Ford F-150, if you saw it the other day. Big truck, so I can actually sleep in it. I had a little Hyundai Elantra before, so that would have been a little bit tough living in that thing. Um, someone like gives me a truck. I'm like, all right, well, there we go, Lord. We've, we've got a truck now. You know? And then you know, uh, there was another lady that came in. She was like, hey, so I know like everyone in the United States. Do you want some contacts? I'm like, Sure. She's like, do you want to do you want to be on the Today Show? And I'm like, no. Um, they, I, I don't know. So that's still in the works right now. But she's one of those people that just knows everyone. And then the, literally the day I left, the day I left, <laughs> this was insane. I gave myself like a minimum budget. Like I just, if I have this much money, I will survive as long as I don't eat too much. That's that's just what I need, bare minimum. So it comes the day of, I'm like fifty dollars short of that. So I'm like, all right, Lord, you know, you'll just provide along the way. We'll be fine. I'll come back 50 pounds lighter. It'll be great. You know, just a tent. Who cares? Um, so day, hours before I leave, um, I'm at church, and my pastor's like, hey, Tucker, come here. I'm like, hey, hey, Bob, what's up? He's like, all right, you're coming up on stage with me. I'm like, I'm doing what? Because this is like a church of 2,000 people. You don't just bring people up on stage if you don't know what they're doing. Um, he's like, no, we're gonna, I'm going to like interview you. You know, I know about your trip. I just wanted to let you dangle to the last second. I'm like, Bob, I'm leaving in three hours. What do you, what, what, last second? Okay, whatever. So we go up. He's talking to me. He's like, hey guys, if you just could, you know, give him a couple bucks before he leaves, you know, just support him. That'd be great. And I'm like, oh yeah, thanks guys. That'd be amazing. So, you know, I'm standing there. I'm looking at my watch because I got like a done because I got to be in Charlotte at a certain time. I'm like, all right. And when I'm leaving in a couple hours. And then there's this horde of people just comes flying out of the atrium doors. I'm like, oh dear, what's about to happen? I left that day with triple the budget that I had, like, previously. And so I'm standing there, and I'm, like, depositing this money at the bank, and I'm looking, I'm like, Lord, you really do like to let us dangle, don't you? He's like, yes, I do, but you see, I provide it, so you don't need to worry about it. And I was like, wow, Lord, you're just amazing. You see, when we are called to do things in faith, when we're called to step out in faith, God always wants to meet us. He's always there. So I'm going to read um, you guys a story. Uh, it's so perfect. Okay, I'm going to go back in time from what Pastor Charles was talking about and go all the way back to a story about Peter, you know. Good old Peter, knucklehead guy. I love him. I, I really relate to him because people always say, you know, Peter says like the dumbest stuff in the Bible. I'm like, yeah, me too. So I can relate to this guy. But in Matthew uh, 14, verse 22, you've all heard this story, but I just want to take a little bit of a look at it. It says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When even came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came forward to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. That's really my story, and that's really your story. And I'll explain why in a second, but first I want to let you guys into um, kind of my time of intimacy with the Lord and um, do this painting for you. Um, so yeah, just taking a moment, this is this painting is a process. It's a journey. It's not about the finished product. It's about what you see during it. 
just take in um, every little bit of it, and uh, I'll kind of explain a little bit to you guys.
been a good, um, I would say, a good portion of my life. Um, living as a Christian, but missing out on one of the greatest parts of a relationship with God. And one of the greatest parts of the relationship with God is getting to tell everyone that I hate about. You see, Charles Gray, we're in tents. We've been given this body. We've been given just a brief moment. Just one brief moment has an impact on this earth that extends into eternity. And it's not going to be found in a 401k. It's not going to be found in some accolades that someone gives you. It's not going to be found in another person. The thing that carries over into eternity is a relationship with God between those that we get to bring with us. You see, for a large part of my life, I was terrified of evangelism. Still am. Like, okay, this is ironic. The two things that I am most, that I dislike the most, talk to people I don't know and going to the beach. So the Lord said, for the entire summer of 2014, I want you to go to the beach and talk to people you don't know. I was like, thank you, Lord, for that. But you see, it doesn't matter if I don't like it because it's a part of the call that I have on my life. And the thing is that I have met so many people. I was in here with a college lady. She's like 70 years old. She's like, I have never shared my faith with anyone until, like, we got down there, until I got down there and we set out to do these outreaches. And we're missing out. We're wasting time. I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but this country isn't exactly on the upward swing right now. This world isn't exactly moving in a great direction. Time is running down. The clock is ticking. And we've only got so much time. Heck, I don't even know if I have till the end of the summer. That's just a, that's my long-term plan right there. Um, but I don't know. I can't waste another second. We can't waste another second. If we're not doing this, we're missing out on what God has for us. We're missing out on the exciting part of the relationship where God says, hey, come out of the boat, onto the water, and let's try a little faith experiment here. And we're like the other disciples who sat in the boat, terrified. And, you know, we always pick on Peter because Jesus is like, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? At least you had a little faith to get out of the boat and step on the waves. <laughs> like, the rest of the disciples were sitting back there saying, I'm not getting out of this thing. Do you, do you see the wind? Do you see the waves? I'm not getting out. Peter at least has eyes on Jesus for a split second. Where he stepped out and walked on water. So here's my question for everyone here. Have you gotten out of the boat? Or have you been in the boat your entire life? Or did you step out once and you started sinking and you said, never again. I'm not doing that again. Where are you at? So I was a disciple in the boat for a long time. I followed Jesus, I loved Jesus, but I wasn't stepping out. I didn't have the faith. I didn't have a little faith. This whole trip that I'm on right now is pretty much me saying, Lord, I'm ready to step out. Stepping out with no license, no car, no resources, no contacts, or nothing. God provided. Each little step that I've taken, God has provided each and every thing. So are you willing to get out of the boat? Are you willing to step out? Are you willing to say, forget what I've been so concerned with. Forget about all this other stuff. Forget what people think about me. Forget what I've held on to for so long that has done nothing for me. Forget these stupid idols that I've been holding on to for so, so long. I want to live a life of faith. I want to step out on water. I want to see what God will do if I will just surrender my life to Him. Is that you? And if so, are you willing to take that step? Well, I'll tell you what. Once you take that step, everything changes. You see God moving miraculously. You see God just do the craziest things. And sometimes you'll start when I was in the back of my truck in that 9 degree heat in a Walmart parking lot, just crying out to the Lord, I was sinking. I was literally like Peter crying, Lord, save me. He provided a place like this. So are you guys willing to step out in faith? Are you willing to forsake the things of this world, forsake those things that hold nothing to you? And say, Lord, I want to tell everyone about you. I don't know how long I've got. I know that God's got enough time for me to tell at least one more person. So I want to pray for you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions about what I do or about the church in general, just talk to me or talk to it. It's not about any of that. Um, so I just want to pray for you guys and then uh, let the worship team come back up. So Lord, right now we just come before you, God, and I just ask this question of faith, Lord, that everyone forsake all the things that we need to hold on to, Lord. We forsake the things that have kept us captive. We forsake the things that keep us comfortable, Lord. And we say, I want to live a life of faith. I want to live a life of passion. I want to live a life of excitement. I want to live a life where I tell everyone I can about what you've done for me. Like tell everyone about the cross. Like tell them about your 
God, I, 